How is it going? What's up guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel Medicosis Perfectionalis. After talking about leukemia and lymphoma for a long time, let's turn attention to leukemia. But first, let's talk about the topic of plasma cell dyscrasia, which includes multiple myeloma. Here is your little nice B lymphocyte secreting plasma cells and plasma cells will secrete antibodies also known as immunoglobulins, which are gamma globulins. I've already posted tens of posts on Facebook about multiple myeloma, so please follow me on Facebook. You'll get lots of stuff. Guys, it's free. Just go to Facebook. And now, let's get started. Increased in number of red blood cells, this is polycythemia vera. Decreased number of red blood cells, this is anemia. Same thing here, leukopenia, leukocytosis. Thrombocytopenia, thrombocytosis. Let's go to lymphocytes. Few lymphocytes and you have lymphopenia. Lots of lymphocytes and you have lymphocytosis, leukemias or lymphoma. And I've talked about them before. Let's go to B lymphocytes. They will secrete plasma cells. An increased number of this is called plasma cell dyscrasia, okay, such as multiple myeloma. By the way, this is a monoclonal proliferation. So this is cancer. Hello. I've told you like gazillion times hematological malignancies are leukemias, lymphomas, and multiple myeloma, such as plasma cell dyscrasia. Actually, multiple myeloma is one of the plasma cell dyscrasias to be specific. I don't care which name you use. Plasma cell dyscrasias, the same thing as monoclonal gammopathy, same thing as paraproteinemias, same thing as dysproteinemias. So let's talk about the normal physiology first, then talk about the pathology. Organization. Cool. So we have the B lymphocytes secreting plasma cells, and plasma cell will secrete antibodies. Antibodies are also known as immunoglobulins. They are gamma globulins. They have light chains and they have the heavy chains. I like different colors here. So brown for the heavy and this whatever, light blue for the light chain. Very nice. In most plasma cells, light chains are synthesized in excess of what's needed so they end up in the urine but normally they are less than 10 milligram per day but when there is a disease such as multiple myeloma they will be more than 10 milligram per day this is detectable using our tests and techniques and we call them benz jones proteins benz jones proteins are the light chains of the immunoglobulin very nice so these free light chains not detected by urine dipstick why is that because urine dipstick or like the urinalysis the conventional dipstick analysis only detects albumin based proteins the immunoglobulin is a globulin not an albumin so it cannot be detected by urine dipstick that's why we need something more specific and something more sophisticated we call it the electrophoresis Let's go back to physiology. You have five heavy chain isotypes, M, A, G, E, D, and two light chain subtypes, the kappa and the lambda. So if this is like a true immunoglobulin, it could be something like, it will choose a letter from here and a letter from here. So it's I, G, G with kappa light chains. Okay, this is only one immunoglobulin. But since we have five heavy chain isotypes and two light chain subtypes, we will choose one from each. Nice. So what's electrophoresis? Why bother? Electrophoresis. Electro means electricity or electrical. Phoresis means separation. We separate the components of plasma proteins using electricity. Here is a power supply, negative electrode and positive electrode. Here are the plasma proteins. If you remember your biochemistry, plasma proteins are negatively charged. So they will repel with this negative electrode and they will attract to this positive electrode. So they will move from here to here. This is the direction of movement. Very nice. They move 
based on their charge, which is negative, and their mass, okay? We expect smaller particles to move faster, okay? It's a no-brainer. Very nice. After they move, we plot them on a graph. We have the albumin, which is the most abundant protein in our plasma. That's why it's a huge spike like this. Then we have all of this is the globulin. Very nice. We have different types of globulins. We have alpha globulins, beta globulins, and gamma globulins. If you have like a memory span of a fish, you remember from the previous slide, I've told you that the immunoglobulins are gamma globulins. So in multiple myeloma, for example, we expect this gamma globulin portion to be high like this. And when it forms a peak like this, we call it a spike. And since the monoclonal gammopathies are monoclonal, so we will call it the M spike in cases of multiple myeloma. Very simple. Why don't they like teach like this in med school? I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. The physiology is over. Let's turn our attention to pathology. Plasma cell dyscrasia, also known as monoclonal gammopathy. So monoclonal means only one entity, one antibody or one crazy cell. Could be single heavy and or light chain. Very nice. Okay. What does gammopathy mean? Pathy means pathology. Gamma means it's a gamma globulin, which is the antibody or the immunoglobulin. So here is the multiple myeloma. Monoclonal, we take the M from here and we call it the M spike or the M component or the M protein. It's not actually like there's nothing called the M protein. It's just the M spike or the M component of the immunoglobulins. And since the immunoglobulins are gamma globulins and the gamma globulins are proteins, we can like metaphorically or whatever call them collectively, we call them M protein. Okay, but there is no such thing as M protein. Also, that's known as the church spire peak. A spire is similar to the steeple of a church, and it looks like this, and that's why we call it church spire peak. Okay, any name, I don't care, but I, you should know them all. Therefore, we officially announce the M component as an excellent tumor marker for monoclonal gammopathies. Yes, because when we have a monoclonal gammopathies, we expect to see the M component, which makes it a tumor marker by definition. Okay, kiddo. What's the definition of monoclonal gammopathies? They are monoclonal B cell disorders or B cell cancers. Cancers, by definition, are monoclonal. Only one cell. So, which means, let's, let's suppose that the multiple myeloma occurs in the IgG kappa subtype. Okay, then we expect the IgA to be low, the IgE to be low, the IgD to be low. Everything else will be low. Everything else will be suppressed except for this monoclonal thing. That's why we call it monoclonal gammopathy. Everything else, including the lambda light chain, will be depressed or decreased or suppressed. That's why patients with monoclonal gammopathies are immunologically suppressed. They don't have anything except for this one crazy thing. Okay, it's useless. It's bad. That's why it's a disease. That's why it's cancer. <sighs> okay, increase in a single immunoglobulin, the M component, the M spike, and its corresponding light chain. We choose something from the letters, like the English letters, and something from the Greek letters. It's very simple. That's why patients are immunosuppressed. These light chains, again, are secreted in the urine. When they are like a lot of them, they are detectable, and we call them the Benz-Jones proteins. Here is a list of the monoclonal gammopathies out there. The MGUS, the monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. Other people will call it monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance. Other people call it monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance. I couldn't care less. It's insignificance, period. It's insignificant, okay? Just get over it. Multiple myeloma, light chain amyloidosis, solitary plasma cytoma. Solitary plasma cytoma is local, 
as we will discuss later. That's why we can treat it using radiation. Okay, if it's local, we radiate. If it's diffuse, we use chemo. Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, heavy chain disease. In the next video, we'll talk about multiple myeloma, but until that time, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You can get access to all of these notes that I'm currently drawing right now, and all of this nice stuff you will get access to, and you can download them. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfect Nails. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard.